We start off and I touch his head to kind of feel him out. This does leave me exposed by creating a path for him to shoot from my hips, but I have my right arm low and ready for a guillotine. I now take a collar tie and pull him into a front headlock as he shoots from my hips. I think about what I want to do with it. I feel it may require too explosive of a movement to snap him down. I try to come around for the back, but I should have snapped him down first as he postures up and I lose him in the transition. He shoots for my hips again, but does so from a bit too far away, which gives me time to bring my legs further away from him. Additionally, he shoots with his lead leg up and his back knee down, the opposite of what he should be doing when dropping a knee to change levels. If I were to sprawl heavy on him, I could potentially buckle and injure his left knee, and he has no ability to drive off the mat with his right knee on the mat rather than his foot. As he postures up, I take an underhook, and I pull him forward to hit what's kind of a cross between an ankle pick and a knee tap. He really overcommits his right leg, which takes away his base going backwards. We land in half guard, and my goal now is to get past his right knee with either leg, as right now, he can use what's in front of it to defend his frame or his shin. I start working to bring my left knee in front of his knee. It may look like I'm at risk of a triangle here, but I know what he needs to make that happen. He needs to bring his hips over my shoulders. And because I'm pinning his head down using my own head and staying heavy on his hips, lifting his hips will be quite difficult. Additionally, I'm also pinning his leg down using my hand and now switch to pinning it with my foot. Now I look to bring my right knee in front of his knee for side control and I do so by knee sliding. Watch how I keep my knee on his hip to control his hips to keep his leg behind me to prevent him from regarding. Because I only have a shallow cross face and don't have an underhook, it's likely not enough to prevent him from turning towards me and possibly regard or get to his knees, so I transition to north-south. Watch how I first position my right arm in front of his knee is to control his hips. Progressing to better and better positions in jiu-jitsu is all about replacing what you're controlling your opponent with so you can maintain control the whole time. I call it a replacement system. I'm controlling him pretty loosely now so I can counter based off what he does. I've got an underhook and I'm waiting for him to get to his knees before positioning my arm underneath his neck. As he gets to his elbow, there's tons of space to get underneath his neck and he fell into my trap. And now I sit to my guard for the arm and guillotine, but I do too many of those on the channel so instead I push off my outside leg and lift him up with my instep of my inside leg for an anaconda choke instead. I use my left hamstring to push his arm across his body so he can't flare his elbow to defend me from locking it up as well as defend against making it tighter. Now I grab my bicep to lock it up and squeeze to force my forearm into his neck and curl my body inward to push his head inward which forces his neck into my forearm. It's always got to be two motions. I did this role before spending a week filming a wrestling for jiu-jitsu instructional with former D1 wrestler Joe Breeza. I learned so much to improve my wrestling. Like right here, I have improper head position and I run the risk of my opponent hitting a fireman's carry. Although it still worked out fine as I hit an inside trip, but I'm really looking forward to all the wrestling improvements I'm going to make. After what was basically like four days of private lessons through the process of filming it, notice how when I land the objective is still the same position myself in front of his knee. This time I do so with my outside leg for a smashed half guard. I take a near side underhook and move my hips to force his legs to point towards the other side. Here's another example of a replacement system in action. I first control above the knee with the flat of my right foot and then switch to the instep of my left leg. I was doing so to enter mounts, but he does a great job pushing me off of him. I'm trying to take the back, but I can't get my hips high enough to win the scramble. So instead settle in close guard and attack right away. And look at how I push him by the armpit, but my hamstring dot balance him to the side. This is the motion needed for a clean close guard armbar. Now I just make sure to control the wrist and that's all she wrote. And now just a quick word for the sponsor of today's video, Elements. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu can be really hard on the body. For example, after training, I often used to experience muscle cramps and fatigue that would last a long time. One of the reasons why this happens is due to the loss of electrolytes, the primary one being sodium. And when sodium isn't adequately replaced, that's when we experience all those muscle cramps and fatigue, which is why I started drinking Elements. It's a tasty electrolyte drink mix with a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. It also comes with no sugar, no coloring, no artificial flavors, none of that BS. Plus, Element is used by everyone from NBA players, Olympic athletes, Navy SEALs, to everyday exercise enthusiasts. And right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. 
Get yours at drinkelement.com slash Jordan Teaches. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinklmnt.com slash Jordan Teaches. Here's another mistake that I've been making in the wrestling department that I learned from Joe. Taking a collar tie on the same side as my lead leg. As Joe explains, doing so makes it easy to lift the elbow and hit what's called the knee pull single. I'm going to be committed to implementing everything that I've learned from Joe and only take collar ties on the same side as my rear leg. I pay for that collar tie here as he puts his judo on display with the Harai Goshi, but I'm able to step out of it. As I do, I attempt an outside trip and he shoots in for a double. Immediately I push my hips into him to stop his forward momentum and lift him up by his head to take him away from my hips. And now he tries another hip throw and then shoots back in for a body block to try to suplex me, but try too much to force it. As he tries to force it, I see that his right leg is in an awkward position and he runs the risk of my weight falling on him and doing damage to that knee. So to be safe, I post my hand on the mat to put my weight on that hand, but I'm still falling backwards, so I hop over his head to avoid injuring his knee. This is what you should be doing, always taking care of your training partners. We need to protect ourselves and each other. This is what a proper suplex looks like. In very similar manner to how I pop my hips with the mat return. So I pull him back and then pop my hips and then I'm finished right in great position. This was his issue. He didn't pop his hips. He kind of just tried to drag me down and his legs got stuck underneath me. As we land in north south, I take my weight off of him because I know he's likely to turn to either side and when he does, I'll capitalize. I take my arm out from underneath his armpit to let him turn to his left so I can take his back, <laughs> but I'm trying to get variety for you guys, so instead of taking the back, I throw my leg between his legs to enter into inside Ashy. I think about the knee bar, but switch instead to the heel hook. He straightens his leg, which is a good idea to defend the heel hook as it's much more powerful when the leg is bent. As he tries to pull it out, I get it bent where I need it again. I'm putting very little pressure with my hips and if I really wanted to finish, I would look to pin his hips to the mat. I can tell that he may be inexperienced with leg locks, so I just let go to be safe. I try to hit a hip throw on my own, but he adjusts out of it. But as he does, I can see that his weight is forward. So as he brings his weight back, I take out his leg with an outside trip. Immediately I jump on his back, but I overshot it and now I'm at risk of a takedown. So I put both my hands and my feet on the mat for what's known as the quad pod in wrestling. He tries one last ditch effort to take my back, but the round ends and that's it. Make sure to sign up for my newsletter to get free jujitsu tips every week. Let me know how much stand up you do and if you watch Joe's channel already and if you're excited about a wrestling for jiu-jitsu course. All right, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.